around 1.2% of US adult men and between 0.3 and 0.7% of adult women are considered to have clinically significant levels of psychopathic traits. These numbers rise significantly higher in prison where 15 to 25% of inmates display these traits. Psychopathy is a neuropsychiatric disorder in which an individual has impaired emotional responses, lack of empathy and increased impulsivity. The extreme of psychopathy is often highlighted in society today, where psychopaths have gained infamy through their devious and brutal crimes. However, psychopathy traits are thought to be more common than you think, with psychologist Martha Strout suggesting 4% of people are psychopaths. If this is the case, then the likelihood of encountering a psychopath in your lifetime, whether it be at work, school or personal relationships, makes it that more possible. Psychopaths tend to be charismatic individuals that draw people in with their charm. This allows them to go undetected and why so many infamous serial killers had got away with the crimes they committed. Psychopaths are highly intelligent and can identify individuals that are agreeable and likely to be easily manipulated. Research has suggested that psychopathy has significant genetic risk factors. Neuroimaging data suggests that psychopaths have dysfunction in their amygdala. The amygdala is integral for forming emotional responses to environmental stimuli that could be perceived as danger. Research has suggested that psychopaths have a reduced fear response which may be linked to the dysfunction in the amygdala and are less likely to avoid danger, painful or embarrassing situations. Abnormalities in the prefrontal cortex have also been found which can lead to disinhibited and impulsive behaviour which are characteristics associated with psychopathic traits. Cortical thickness in the orbital frontal region of the brain has been associated with response preservation. This is an individual's desire to continue an action for its reward or self-gratification regardless of the consequences of that action. A study involving functional MRI looked at participants completing a reinforcement learning task inside the scanner which assessed any changes in brain activity when their consequences changed from reward to punishment. The switch from reward to punishment had shown abnormally increased activity in the posterior cingulate cortex and the interior insula. The results had highlighted that individuals with psychopathic traits do not show just reduced neural activity to punishment but in fact process information differently. Damage to the brain early on in life, as well as trauma, can result in severe and persistent deficits in decision making, emotional responses and can be the core contributor to psychopathy, adversely impacting an individual's life trajectory and the actions that may follow. Psychopathy is resistant to treatment, rehabilitation strategies are often ineffective, as well as the fact that these individuals often do not have a desire to change. Newer strategies for treatment aim to target behavioural control rather than empathy and changing an individual's character, which has developed throughout their lifetime. That being said, successful interventions are more likely to occur during childhood. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.